Hey there! If you subscribe to this channel or if you hang around this hot dog stand, you probably know that I like reverb a lot. I love reverb. I would consider myself a reverb snob. When I should be playing the guitar through a reverb pedal and just getting lost in the billowy, beautiful, lush, ambient soundscape, I'm instead listening for comb filters and loop points in the algorithm. So while lucky, privileged musicians like yourself get to enjoy pedals like this, or this, or this, or this, I'm tortured, or just an annoying twat. I feel like the last time I properly tested a reverb pedal was in 2018 with the Specular Tempest that you could see back there. Since then, I've actually loosely prototyped my own reverb algorithm that gently plays feedback and harmonics in the scale that it thinks you're playing in. And maybe one day I'll figure out how to put it on a pedal. But this is what it sounds like. But if you've watched some of my past reverb reviews, you'll remember that I do not like testing a reverb by just playing guitar through it, because I feel like there's way too many variables. A skilled guitarist could just play some chords and maybe a little solo in a major scale that never really changes, and that kind of makes any reverb sound good. But if you were to play, for example, a Joe Pass arrangement through that same reverb algorithm, it's going to sound like an atonal mess. And then what guitar should I use? I could use a Jackson with really boomy nine gauge strings, or I could use my hollow body jazz guitar with flat wound warm strings. One of those is going to make it sound noisier. One of those is going to actually possibly make it create a peaking distortion. But there is an app for that. And yes, I have created my own app to test reverb algorithms. And if you've ever looked at me and thought, man, that guy's wife is really out of his league, the trick is, guys, you gotta flaunt your reverb algorithm testing methods. I could also grip a basketball. I don't really know what reverb I should test today. Do you guys have any suggestions? Fine, let's put the Source Audio Ventress Dual Reverb to the test. For a really long time, if you wanted a reverb that sounded good or accurate, you were going to have to spend some big bucks on a rack unit. I had a New Neighbor wet pedal, for example, and that sounded pretty decent for live use. It would be good to have as the end of chain on my guitar at live shows to give things a little bit more space, but in a studio or recording environment, I wasn't into it. The first reverb pedal that really blew my mind was the now infamous Strymon Big Sky, particularly the cloud algorithm. And I used that pretty excessively on ambient textures and pads. Then in late 2017, I heard some demos of the Empress reverb online and I thought they might be a little bit too good to be true, but I spent 500 bucks at the time on the pedal and a new king was crowned. I had never heard an algorithmic reverb sound that good. In the videos where I've tested reverb pedals or reverb algorithms, you'll see a lot of comments that just shout the name of another reverb for me to check out. And I want you to know that I don't do these reverb tests on every single reverb that comes out, not even close. Mono reverb pedals are generally uninteresting to me. A lot of times I'll see stereo pedals and listen to some of the samples. It was almost two years ago now when I got sent a prototype of the Specular Tempest, and that one really caught my eye. They have great reverb algorithms. Not as great as Empress reverbs, but very, very close. But the pedal is also a full delay pedal as well. But the Specular Tempest did have this one thing that no pedal, rack unit, or even VST plugin could pull off. And it was this anti-shimmer algorithm that turned any high notes you played into these glorious pads and octave lower. And that algorithm alone makes it worth buying. The Ventress Dual Reverb is not new. People have been telling me to check it out for a long time. And you know what? I looked at some YouTube videos of people playing through it and I wasn't a amazed, and so I never really bothered, and that's my bad. There are definitely quite a few really good guitar gear channels, but Guitar YouTube is a bit like Guitar Center, where you just have a lot of dudes with Nikki Six style haircuts checking out gear as an excuse for other people to listen to them play the guitar. And I should have dug deeper, and once I did dig deeper on the Ventress Dual Reverb, here we are, we have a contender. So the Ventress Dual Reverb, the hardware itself has stereo inputs, stereo outputs, 
a DIN MIDI in, a MIDI through. It has a quarter inch expression pedal in, as well as an eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter control input. It uses 200 milliamps of nine volt power, and it has a mini USB port for what? Well, you can upload, download, edit presets on a PC editor. They also have app editors. And by the way, while I'm talking about the trend of really powerful graphical interface editors for Source Audio's products, I'm also gonna be using a C4 synth for a little bit today, which, you know, has four knobs, one little switch here, stereo in, stereo out, control input. However, the graphic interface, for example, on Windows is absolutely crazy. This is just like a quick micro review and a review of the C4. This thing goes for 200 bucks. It looks harmless enough, you know, four knobs and a little switch here, but the PC editor is absolutely insane. It feels like a full featured VST plugin. It has four oscillators, two filters, uh, two modulation engines with two envelopes, two LFOs, I believe two sequencers, and FM. My videos are way too long as it is. I'm definitely not gonna be doing a full breakdown of the C4 in this video, but I just wanted to let you know what you were hearing. Back to the Ventress Dual Reverb. Why is it called Dual? Not because it wants to slap you with a glove, but because it's pretty much two identical reverb pedals in the same pedal. You have an A channel, a B channel, and an A plus B channel. You get to set them up separately and stack two different algorithms on one another. I have no idea how useful this is going to be, but I do know that it's going to be fun. And there also are a lot of things like spring, lo-fi, off spring, swell, things that I'm just gonna be interested in hearing and playing with anyway that make all pedals unique. I need some tips on how to do better lighting for pedals because these things are not easy to light. I have like five different studio lights. Maybe my background lights need to go up. 100%, setting studio brightness to 75%, to 51%. This lighting thing is a battle I will not win. So I am using my app and the first and most brutal thing that you could put through any reverb is a tiny tick of full spectrum noise like that. And then the second most brutal thing, cover your ears, is a sign sweep. And if you didn't like the sound of that, I'm wearing really loud headphones, so. Then we have some other ticks from drum machines and a Tyco, a deep 808 bass, some melodic stuff that's all on the same scale, and then some melodic stuff that actually kind of goes all over the place. And I have a few other samples that I'll throw in. All right, so our first algorithm is room. Control one is bass and control two is modulation depth. I don't really know what the modulation sounds like, but we'll find out. Pre-delay and treble. And remember, this is only one algorithm. This can run two at a time, but I'm just testing the algorithms themselves. So we're only gonna run one reverb channel. All right, let's just hear the algorithm with no modulation, medium bass and treble, and everything turned up. All right, I'm gonna try the brutal sign sweep. We don't buy a pedal like this for the room reverb. We could just use an impulse response if we want that. So let's go with hall and let's see how the hall sounds. The control one again is bass. The control two is the size of the hall. So this would be the smallest and we'll try the largest next. Let's go with the largest. This is a pretty noisy one, but let's just hear it used on a guitar. Hmm, yeah, it doesn't sound that noisy actually when you pump a guitar through it. You know what, I think I figured this one out. I know what's going on here. Check it out.
And I might be wrong, but I think I know what's going on in the algorithm here. And it's really clever. And I bet that it's going to be in pretty much all of these presets in some way, shape, or form because it does sound really good. And I don't know if I would actually call it reverb. I guess it, I guess it is reverb because it's part of a reverb algorithm. I'm not going to bust out a whiteboard and start drawing my theory of what I think is going on in this algorithm because... A, I might be wrong, and B, it is their algorithm, and they did a really good job. I, I do think it's clever, but let's move on. All right, this is E-Dome. The control one is bass. Control two is modulation. Let's turn the modulation all the way down. Wetness all the way to 100%. The time all the way to 100%. And uh, let's hear this. Let's hear a sign sweep. I think this one reinforced my theory. Let's hear a little bit of a guitar being played in the exact same scale through this one. Let's listen to an acoustic guitar piece that changes scales. We're on to true spring, and I love spring reverbs, and I've heard great things about Ventress's spring reverbs, so I'm really excited to hear this. And uh, let's give it the old noise pop. This is bass as usual, and then this is shortest springs, medium springs, longest springs. So let's go to medium now. And longest springs. It actually sounds like a pretty realistic spring reverb, but to be honest, I kind of wish that I could go a little bit longer with the springs, but I do have a feeling that I'll be able to do that in the off spring. Let's just hear a simple guitar piece through this. All right, now we're on to plate. Control one is bass and control two is the size of the plate. So let's go with the smallest. Medium. And large. To be honest, the large plate was a little bit too dirty for my liking, so I'm going to go back to medium. I think that was the best out of the bunch, in my opinion. Um, let's go to, like, a medium mix. Let's go to uh, maybe a little bit longer of a tail, because we are showing off the reverb after all. A little bit more of a pre-delay, treble down, bass up, and uh, let's put a gospel choir through here and see how that sounds. Thank you. 
Just so you know, you could hold this foot switch down here and it'll freeze everything. And it actually sounds like a really good freeze. Good job. All right, lo-fi reverb. Control one is distortion or dirtiness and control two is modulation, but it's not the same type of modulation that they're using in the other algorithms. Supposedly it's going to be an asymmetrical pitch modulation. So more of like a random, well, it's just gonna sound really chaotic and broken, which lo-fi, that's kind of the point. So let's hear it just with these turned all the way down. Sounds pretty hi-fi to me. Let's turn these up. You know, something tells me that I'm probably going to need to put a melodic tone through here to get the full effect. <laughs> I dig that. All right, so this one is mod verb, and this one controls the type of tremolo, and this one controls the speed of the tremolo. But let's hear it without the tremolo first and give it the good old tick. Let's give it a sweep. That was interesting. What I think I heard there was a very subtle reversal of what I had given it. Let's hear the sweep one more time, as brutal as it is. Yeah, so the algorithm is reversing what you're putting into it and then playing it forward again in sort of like a reverse delay type thing. Let's see if that actually happens with tones. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't really notice it with tones. You would only notice it with something like a sign sweep. All right, let's listen to this tremolo I keep reading about. It's really nice how extreme that panning is. And I bet with something like an electronic sequence, if you were able to time that up with the MIDI import that's here, um, that would actually be pretty powerful. Oh, we all love a good shimmer, don't we? Control one is just how much shimmer you have. So zero loads of shimmer. And uh, control two is shimmer regeneration. So basically how sparkly it's going to sound. So let's hear, I don't know, let's just put these up to like 30% and see where that takes us. That was actually really nice. All right, let's try and go completely overboard with it. And overboard that was. And maybe the guitar?
it's really hard for me to find a shimmer that I like and one that I'll actually use in my music. And unfortunately, this probably isn't one of those. But that being said, I'm looking forward to actually just playing an instrument through this and being able to use both reverbs because I think just using that shimmer as a tiny cherry on the top of one of the other algorithms is going to go a really long way and sound absolutely extraordinary. All right, so this is echo verb and the controls are simple enough. This is the speed of the delay. This is the feedback of the delay. And this is the crossfade between the delay and the reverb. And so let's just go with a pure delay with uh, medium feedback. I believe this button holds the delay indefinitely. All right, so this is swell. Option one is basically the sensitivity of the signal to trigger the swell. So I believe higher will mean you'll have to like pick your string stronger and lower will, you know, you'll be able to tap something and so I'll just put it in the middle for now. And this is the time it takes for the swell to come in to 100%. And then pre-delay, of course, is the time it is for the swell to begin coming in. So I'm going to turn everything to 100%. I'm going to give it, I think I'll give it a sign sweep to start and see how it sounds. Maybe it's the pre-delay. It seems to not be catching any of the bass. Maybe if I lower these. It sounds good otherwise, but for some reason with that sine sweep, it just lacks the bottom 300 hertz. Uh, let's just give it like an 808 kick. Yeah. Weird. Why is that happening? So while I'm confused by this, it may not actually have an effect when you put a guitar through it. So let's just do that. I'm going to try and turn everything down one more time and put that 808 kick through here because I think that maybe it's just not sampling bass from the beginning of the signal. Well, I guess the swell isn't going to work with kick drums or the first bass note you put through it, but otherwise it sounds pretty dang good. Other than that odd bass thing, the swell sounds pretty great to me. I'm really excited to check out Offspring because this looks like a really unique effect. All right, so Offspring. This is the brightness or the darkness of the trail sound. And then this is the modulation. Um, let's just, I am assuming that this might be the speed of the actual spring. We'll find out in a moment. Uh, let's give it a good tick. Oh, nice. Okay, so let's turn the modulation down and... Got it. Interesting. It sounds like it's using a filter to extract the nearest notches to create a tone. So, for example, if I were to turn this all the way down, this in the middle, this all the way up, and then this sort of like as short as possible, I bet that if I just played a tiny tick through it, it would sound like a chime or something. 
Yeah, or maybe like a pan. I set up both A and B to be on this offspring in slightly different variations. That's pretty cool. It's definitely extracting a randomized timbre out of things that don't necessarily have tones. All right, and finally we have reverse. The first control is diffusion, and the second control is modulation. So let's turn that modulation all the way down, diffusion right in the middle. Interesting. It's sort of pulling those melodic notches out. I wonder if it does that if I move the diffusion all the way up. I expected this to be a reverse reverb, but it's not. Or if it is, it's just not a very good one. But what it is is a really unique effect that's kind of unlike anything I've heard before. So let's try this again. I also like it when the diffusion's all the way down. It's interesting because it's not really reversing all that much, but I do feel like if you had CB control or something of this effect, it would be really powerful. You know what? I feel like my favorite algorithm out of the bunch is E-Dome. Let's hear that with some musical things being played through it a bit more. I really like this unit and I'm excited to play with it in a more creative way rather than just testing it out.
So after just playing around with the Ventress Dual Reverb with a variety of instruments, I realized that it was very hit or miss depending on not only what instrument I was putting into it, but what I was playing. While that would normally be kind of a bad thing for me, I actually really, really love this pedal. I just don't love it as a go-to reverb pedal. I love it as more of an experimental reverb pedal with its own personality. For example, the offspring algorithm, when you turn the timing to really fast and the feedback up, it actually gives it this atonal timbre. And so I put that on channel A and then I put another version of it on channel B and slightly detune them and just tiny little ticks, like if I were to just hit a fret or, you know, I was just putting a little clip of noise through it and it literally sounded like I was banging on a dumpster. On the other hand, I feel like Room, Hall, Edome, Modverb, etc. are very similar algorithms and so I wouldn't put one in channel A as an early reflection and one in channel B as the long tail. Using something like the distortion or that crazy chaotic sound in the lo-fi algorithm in channel A and then in channel B having a really long warm swell that would sound really beautiful i feel like so many people are just going to inevitably ask me this so i'll just say it on a purely technical algorithmic level i don't think that it touches empress's top two algorithms but keep a few things in mind one that is something that very few guitarists are going to care about at that level. I feel like different instruments and different players resonate better with different reverbs and different pedals. Two, as I just mentioned, there are a ton of unique, experimental, and just plain fun features in here that you're not gonna find in another pedal or even a plugin. This pedal is not gonna sit on a shelf. It's going directly into my effects chain on either my modular or my guitar setup upstairs, and I can almost guarantee that you're gonna see it again on this channel. Since I'm basically just giving an open mic to the world to talk about reverb, which is one of my favorite topics, uh, there's something I kind of want to brush on. A couple of years ago, I still held rack reverbs higher in quality than I did pedals or even plugins. And then I got a chance to spend a lot of time with a Brycasty M7, which is a $4,000 cream of the crop Cadillac of reverb processors. And I'm not going to make a lot of friends in the industry by saying this, but I didn't get it at all. 15 years ago, no plugin or pedal could touch the quality of something like a Lexicon MX300 or an Eventide Harmonizer. But now, well, in the last video I made on this channel, you saw me cover a pedal called the PolyFX Digit. And the PolyFX Digit allows you to load in your own impulse response reverbs up to four channels. I could think of a few digital audio workstation plugins off the top of my head that support eight channel convolution or impulse response. I feel like if somebody is making an artificial room hall or plate algorithm that somehow sounds more realistic than a properly made eight channel impulse response, then that is proof that we're living in a simulation. So what we have left is algorithmic reverb, the stuff that sounds like exaggerated halls or things that we don't have in nature, the super spacious billowy sounds that we expect out of a pedal like this. I feel like ever since the Strymon Big Sky, the algorithm has been more about finding a Goldilocks zone between something like the sh classic Schroeder reverb algorithm and then a spectral freeze after that. So it's odd because we're not even purely talking about reverb algorithms anymore. We're talking about reverb algorithms seamlessly blending into I guess, granular synthesis. And let's say the Empress Reverb is 99.95% perfect, then the Specular Tempest would be like 99.92% perfect, and this would be like 99.9% perfect. Believe it or not, there are some people out there that see my channel as sort of the final word for reverb reviews, and I am extraordinarily grateful for that. And I'm not doing myself any favors by saying the following, but this margin of error that I'm talking about between these algorithms should not be what defines which pedal you buy. Try and think of it as buying an Xbox versus a PS4. The Xbox games may often have a barely noticeable higher resolution and textures, whereas the PS4 games may be the ones that you want to play. And by the way, the Empress Reverb has come quite a long way since 2017. They've updated the firmware a whole bunch of times, adding a looper and a freeze hold with the foot switch and a bunch of new reverb algorithms, a bunch of new glitchy algorithms. It has its own personality and it's worth checking out on its own. A lot of people have clicked on this video because they wanted some advice on which reverb pedal to buy. And they were hoping, after watching all of this time, that I would have an answer for them. 
but Fortunately, I don't. But I have some good news. I did the math and you can have a Ventress dual reverb, a Specular Tempest, an Empress reverb, and even the C4 synth for pretty much the exact amount of money that is on the US government stimulus check that they're gonna send to somebody who's been dead for five years instead of you. If you like this video or if you learned anything, subscribe to this channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you have heard of any other reverb pedal at all, feel free to just type it in all caps in the comments because that's really helpful. If you want to hear some neato stuff and directly support me in the process, check out my Bandcamp link down there. And if you already own all my music, then I don't know, buy my piano album for your mom. Ladies and gentlemen and everything in between, please, please, please stay safe this 4th of July. And I'm not just telling you not to drink and drive or not to shoot bottle rockets into your eye. You know, there is a whole pandemic going on. Wear a mask, wash your hands if you have to go out. I really just don't want any of you to die. I love you, bye.